architecture and photography kind of go hand in hand. You know, and for years, um, you know, that was the way that we saw most buildings. If you think about Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water or, you know, some of the great buildings in New York, you know, uh, photography is a way to introduce buildings to the world. Uh, what's happening now, which is so great, is that with, with digital cameras being relatively easy to use and being inexpensive, iPhones and the, and the like, it gives us a chance, uh, regular people, to, to kind of document these same structures and show them off and show them to the world ourselves. You know, mid-century buildings, uh, I'm interested for two reasons. One is, you know, these were the cool buildings when I was, when I was a kid growing up. And, um, and the contrast between these buildings and the generally older city uh, of Chicago is kind of striking. They're minimal, they're, you know, they're, they're not as ornate, uh, but they have their own beauty. Uh, also, now, jumping forward, uh, these buildings are also the most endangered, among the most endangered buildings, because in many cases they're too new to be landmarked. You don't quite make the 50-year mark, although increasingly they are, like the one behind us. And, uh, you know, and there's a little bit of, you know, trendiness too. I mean, I think things like Mad Men and other things, TV show, have uh, increased awareness of this kind of architecture. And um, I think by documenting them, by documenting them, it allows, hopefully, the preservation mechanism to hurry, to hurry up and catch up with them and kind of preserve these buildings as well. Uh, now we're on the corner of North and Clark, which is a great old city street. Um, and in it, you have a various mi mix of buildings, buildings from the 20s, a little bit before. But you also have this great building behind me, Diamond Bank Building, uh, from 1961. It's a great mid-century building. I mean, very much in contrast to the movie auditorium next to it. Um, Two-story bank building. And if you look real closely, uh, it, it clearly is informed by the Manufacturer's Bank in New York by SOM. Uh, just look like a, a smaller scale version of it, um, and uh, and it's in great condition, and uh, and it's the kind of building I like to, to document. So you know, so if I were documenting this building, I would you know kind of do uh, a thing where I'd sort of show it in its context, you know, some shots far away across the street, that kind of thing. But then I want to move in a little closer, and I think things like, like the revolving door, uh, I like, and again the um, the sort of crispness of the building, the way. Um, uh, and transparency of the building. These are the kind of details that I, that I want to see. Um, and you know, and it's interesting because you know, when you think about photographing an older building, you think, okay, the column capitals, the gargoyles. You know, those those are the things that obviously attract the eye. Um, for mid-century buildings, it, it really becomes a, a an exercise in documenting the kind of mathematics of the building, uh, how the pieces fit together very tightly, uh, the rhythm of the building. Uh, that that's really where the beauty of the building. And the details of the building are the details of the building are often expressed. Uh, also structurally, I mean, there's some things here that are kind of interesting as I look at it, that remind me of, of McCormick Place. McCormick Place, what McCormick Place would become ten years later, which is this idea of a uh, of a structural cage, if you will, the structural supports on the outside of the building and, and made visible, and that holds up the building, which allows on the inside a banking floor and a lobby that's free of visual obstructions. And all these things are very important in the development of architecture, but also the development of, of, of banks of this, of this kind. But if the building still had this, its original interior, you know, I'd want to document that and sort of show the function of the building uh, as well. I also like to have people in my shots because it gives um, perspective to the size of the building, uh, but it also kind of you know, shows a building in action. You know, and a building like this is the kind of building that I think should be landmark. I mean, these are the next generation of landmark buildings. You know, this building actually turns 50, or turned 50 last year or so, uh, so they're hitting the, that, that, that magic point. So buildings like this and, and, and others, uh, these are the kind of structures that the cities and the nation's landmarks mechanism has to begin to, to pick up. You know, it understands the building next door to it, right? We see that as an old building, uh, and, and the buildings that are just sort of behind us that are out of the shot. But, uh, but again, these are, the, these are the new landmarks, and, um, and sooner or later they have to be sort of, uh, you know, picked up and, and honored and, and, uh, and protected as well.